Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and welcome to Three Techniques for Good Grief Counselling. Sorrow makes us all children again, destroys all differences of intellect, the wisest know nothing. So said Ralph Waldo Emerson. I think that's a beautiful quote, because we live in a society where death is somewhat taboo. And although there are many ways of comforting and supporting a grieving person, many people don't know what to do or to say when someone they know has experienced a loss. They might feel embarrassed or even avoid them. So just when your client needs support and understanding and listening ears the most, they may, may find that people um, have started to avoid them in their life out of embarrassment or awkwardness. So grieving the death of a loved one is of course entirely natural and not pathological in any way. Okay, it's not a condition, it's a natural part of life. And while people say that there are different stages of grief, different people deal with grief in different ways. No one has to experience, you know, by definition, there's no rule, um, all of the particular set of emotions in any set order. So grief should only become a concern if it doesn't start to diminish after some months and the grief-stricken person starts to believe that they can't possibly have any meaningful existence in their future without their deceased loved one. Okay, so though we shouldn't pathologize grief, it's good for counsellors and therapists to help our clients stop grieving or stop continually burdening their lives with an overfocus on the deceased loved one. So here are three guidelines. And the first grief counselling technique is to let them talk about the deceased. People often feel awkward about discussing a deceased person with someone who's, who is bereaved to the point that they won't even mention the person's name. And this is really hard for the one who's grieving as they'll often want and need to talk about their lost partner, friend or uh, relative or whoever it is. If you're reasonably sure it won't unnecessarily upset your client, ask about the dead person and encourage your client to talk about them and past times that they, that they had with them, what they loved about them and so forth. Allow them to describe uh, what the person they've lost was like, their foibles, their likes and dislikes, and even their weaknesses if they come up. Okay. And you might also ask them, them how the person would have wanted them to be living now and even what advice or comfort they imagine that person might have given them in their grief. Okay, that can be an incredibly powerful thing to thought experiment for your client. And, and this may be the first time they've probably, or prob uh, properly, I should say, been able to pay tribute in words and have it accepted. Okay, so number two, uh, my second way of approaching grief therapy is to distinguish grief from trauma. This is really important. This is potentially the most important of my grief counseling techniques. So you may hear clients say things like, I just can't think about them without that horrible image of them lying in the hospital. Or all I see when I think about them or when I close my eyes is the way they looked when they were dead, or when they were just about to die. And while someone is still experiencing flashbacks to the time they heard about the death of their loved one or found them dead or saw them dying, the natural processes of grief don't really get a chance to um, start, let alone run their course, because the person's stuck at the trauma stage. And of course, their corpse isn't really the person or who they were, just as the way someone died is not their life, it's not them. I often reassure people through analogy by talking about how the final punctuation mark at the end of the story isn't the book itself. It's just the way it ends. And all the other chapters are still there. And how, you know, you'll have all those different chapters full of events, adventures, and maybe illustrations. And they're real. That's a real book. Not just the last punctuation mark. You don't have to think about that when you think about the whole book. And when we think of a book, we take it as a whole, not just its final bit. That's a beautiful metaphor that I found to be really effective with grieving people. People tend to get the message more easily when we communicate metaphorically in this way. But if someone is deeply traumatized by the memory um, or the manner 
in which someone died, we need to help them by de-traumatizing those memories as soon as possible so they can feel free then to grieve properly. And the best way I've found to do this is through the rewind technique. Okay, three, we can deal with guilt and help them organize the grief. Guilt can be a real problem in grieving. You know, people will often feel guilty about stuff they did or didn't do or said or didn't say to the uh, deceased person. Or they may, might feel bad because they're starting to grieve less intensely and are not always thinking about the person anymore that they've lost. They feel almost disloyal sometimes. So if a client is struggling with guilt that they're not grieving enough anymore, I'll suggest that the best way to really honor someone's life is to properly and fully live yourself. I also suggest that rest is an important part of doing anything well. So an athlete, for example, needs to train hard and eat properly, of course, but in order to get better at what they do, they also have to not exercise sometimes and simply rest so that when they are exercising and training, it's even better, it's better quality. So you can let your client know they can grieve even better and in a sense more purely if they start having breaks from grieving. Okay, there's an unfamiliar idea, but I found that really useful. They can allow themselves to forget their lost loved one for a while so that they can actually remember the person better at other times. For some people, we might suggest a grieving day, you know, once a month eventually, uh, or eventually after that to once or twice a year. And they can spend the whole day on a predetermined uh, date perhaps, or maybe just a part of a day, thinking about their loved one, or maybe looking at pictures of them and honoring their life in whatever uh, way seems appropriate. So we're sort of ritualizing uh, and controlling and taking control of the grief to some extent. This approach helps um, stop grief from constantly intruding by providing an organized outlet and a regular ritual. And that can be incredibly powerful and, and uh, beneficial. And eventually help your client begin to uh, look to a productive and, dare we suggest, fulfilling future. Because, as the writer Jan Glidewell so eloquently said, you can clutch the past so tightly to your chest that it leaves your arms too full to embrace the present. So I hope you've found that useful and if you did please hit like, subscribe and if you want to hear when my uh, next video is published hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Tyrrell and I hope I'll see you soon over at unk.com that's unk.com slash blog and thanks for watching.